Welcome to the U World Order Showcase Podcast. Your host, Jill Hart, the coach's alchemist. Couldn't be more excited to have you join us today. On this podcast, we celebrate the champions of change, the up and coming life, health and transformational coaches who are fearlessly stepping forward to make a difference in the world. Get ready for inspiring stories, practical tips, and powerful moments that will motivate you to make a positive change in your life and those around you. We're happy to have you join us on this incredible journey as we dive into the world of life, health, and transformational coaches who are lighting up the path towards a better tomorrow. Welcome to the U World Order Showcase podcast. Today we are joined by Zaza Tudos. Zaza empowers people to gain emotional resilience so they can live consciously. I am so excited to chat with her today about all things consciousness. So welcome to the show, Zaza. Thank you very much, dear. I am so very happy to be here. Hi, people. So tell us your story. How did you get into this? When did you first wake up to the possibilities? It's a very interesting question. Everybody's asking this question. And for me, it's very hard to answer. Because in my childhood, I have always been awake. I knew what was happening around me. I've seen beyond everybody's capabilities. Um, I was talking to the birds and the trees and whatever. And I clearly remember back when I started talking, I was telling everybody that I came from the Euphrates and Tigris. (laughs) My family said, okay, nobody knew what or where it was, you know. But I was saying that, yes, I came from Mesopotamia or Babylonia or whatever it is. And um, so actually the idea was that my third eye never closed up. Everybody uh, is born with the third eye open, meaning that the senses are sharp. So we have the five senses, of course, and they are sharp and we want to uh, work with them all the time, you know? And nobody said to me, come on, don't touch that and don't uh, smell it and don't eat that and don't go there and whatever. So I was just doing my uh, wandering around all over the place and experiencing everything. So actually I thought everybody was the same. I never thought that I was something unique. I still don't think I am unique because whatever I am doing, anybody can learn that. I know because I have students, so I can assure you it is true. However, um, I lived in Brazil for two uh, two years and um, I went back home to London Well, by the way, I am a British Hungarian (laughs) and went back to London. And my friend said to me, do you want to have a Reiki initiation? And I said, yeah, I have the time and I have enough money for that. Let's do it. I had no idea what Reiki was, I tell you. Um, However, she was telling me this and that and I was saying no. It doesn't go like that. It's supposed to be like this and that. And in my house, I find this and that and whatever it was. So actually, she was telling me, "Ah, how do you know all that? I said, yeah, but how don't you know all that? I mean, everybody knows that. And she said, no. So that was the time when I started to think about it. And also because I didn't like uh, 
the uh, the actual uh, surroundings of, of this healing method because there is a lot of fantasy in it and illusions and whatever. I don't like that. Uh, I have a philosophy as an intellectual property called Akia and this philosophy works with actually removing all the man-made gap fillers from everything. So I started off with the Reiki and I went on doing a lot of stuff after that. So that was my first step into uh, this world. But it didn't change anything in my life because I, I thought everybody was doing that. And I have always been doing it. So that is it. So in, in terms of Reiki, are you talking about like manipulating energy? And uh, how, does, in how does that look to you? Yes, uh, actually, what we always do manipulate energies. I mean, whatever we do, we manipulate people, and by that energies, of course, for what we are saying, where we look, what we do, it's all manipulation of energies. The whole life is manipulation of energies. Now, what I didn't like in Reiki actually was that it was saying that it is a Reiki energy. No, it's not Reiki energy. And you have to be um, uh, attuned to be able to have this energy. No, you just have to learn how to have this energy, but you don't need to be attuned for all those symbols, actually. Um, also, I didn't like that uh, I was sort of told that Reiki is an intelligent energy and it understands where to go and how much it is needed. No, that's not true. There is no intelligent energy on earth. You are the one who has to know how much and what kind of energy one needs and all that thing around it. I mean, uh, for me, don't get me wrong, they, they done a really great service to humanity actually in, in many ways because they opened up people to uh, healing and self-healing and all kind, kinds of things but uh, of course the flow thing started with it also you know that okay I don't need to learn anything because I just reiki somebody <laughs> and then I've done my work, but it never is like that. You really need to understand the structure of healing. Everybody is capable of healing, but you have to understand the structure of it. So, yeah, I agree with you so much, and and thank you for saying that because there's there's different ways healing can happen with people, and people heal differently depending on what the dis-ease is that they're experiencing and sure. um just just the manipulation of energy in itself for the purpose of manipulating energy I, I, have you ever done kidong no but i know i i understand what it is it i did some exercises and I'm like no expert. I it was just I saw a YouTube video and I was doing the exercise. And you can actually feel the manipulation of energy when you do these exercises. Whether you believe it or not, you, you can feel it. It's something that is tangible. Um, and that's that's kind of the energy I think that we're talking about here in terms of healing. But you have to direct it somewhere. It doesn't just like <laughs> you can you can yeah, you can manipulate it. it. But if yeah. you don't direct it somewhere, then it just is going to dissipate. Yes, and, and it's not just that. You know, uh, sorry to interrupt. It is no. Go ahead. The, the most important in that is that there are certain things needing either positive or negative polarity. I am only talking about physics here. I don't use the uh, terms positive or, and negative in life in any where whatsoever. 
but I am talking about uh, polarities here. Uh, like an inflammation is a positive in polarity. So it needs negative polarity energy to actually heal it, you know, like, like if you have a, a, a tumor, let's say, and people are saying, okay, I reiki you. No, you cannot do that because it is going to grow. It will never disappear because that's what you do. You give it energy. And actually, again, it is positive in polarity. So you really need to be able to change the polarity of the energy from the universe to be able to direct it to the person who you are helping. So not many people do that. I have never heard anybody who've been changing polarities of energies, but it is in my book. And of course, I have a healing method also because it comes with the philosophy. It, it is, they are just interrelated. And with these healing methods, um, we do quite a lot of wonderful work. I mean, my students also, of course, they are extraordinary healers. So we do quite a good stuff. So how do you actually work with people? Um, I don't anymore <laughs> because... Um, um, because, you know, I, first of all, I do everything online nowadays. And mm -hmm. it's not just because of the COVID and whatever, but because the whole um, earth is there, you know, and it is very difficult to just sort of focus on one group of people. And I am really unable to do that. Before it was a bit, uh, easier but now it is not and also of course i do a lot of other stuff i write i have 11 books published and of course um, i write articles i uh, do group working in my membership really <laughs> because that is the um, idea um, i thought the best one for my work where I can talk about anything what comes and of course we can do some healing uh, it doesn't cost a lot of money and you don't have to take a course as such but everything is interrelated in it and it looks after uh, people's um, mental and emotional intelligence and of course all the uh, well-being and openness and awakening you know and consciousness <laughs> all of it is there so that's what i do at the moment does it provide a group environment for people to interact with each other or is it just um well how does it look um i do it online of course mm -hmm. um and i actually just started up a new version of it. It, it, it. it opens on the 30th of September, my membership program and, and the new one. And um, it actually works with lectures. I have a lot of lectures with a Q&A at the end, you know, so people can ask and obviously they are there and I uh, record the videos so they can uh, watch it later if they wanted to. And uh, also, I put mini courses in it, you know, and even big courses, because I have six really good digital courses, and I don't want them to waste. So I sort of feed into the membership as such. And of course, we do meditation work. I want them to understand different types of of, of knowledge because they are all interrelated. I, I teach witchcraft, I teach shamanism, I teach alchemy, I teach even wudun. <laughs> so 
you know, a lot of things. And I just want people to understand that they are all um, part of the knowledge what we have. And um, nothing is black. There is no black rich and white rich. Uh, really, it depends on the aim, what you aim your ritual towards. But that is uh, down to the human being. It's not down to witchcraft as such. So, uh, you know, tarot reading even, and a lot of like seeing, and we do um, messages from the universe, you know. So through a um, uh, medium, we actually get acquainted or, or connected to a medium from the universe and bring messages for the people who are around. So it's fun, actually, and it's really good because it helps them if they are in trouble, if they don't know how to choose or what to do, you know. So actually, um, it is very helpful to people. So I am introducing them to everything what is possible for a human being because we have so many beautiful tools we have so much capability and we just really need to learn how to use all that stuff is gorgeous so that's what so, it is what are your thoughts on rituals asking them um, what are your thoughts on on performing rituals why do you think they're so uh, powerful um rituals are always powerful i mean we do rituals really day every day you know get up in the morning we have a ritual coffee and a cigarette or whatever if you smoke or god knows what i mean we do those rituals but in witchcraft um, uh, the most important is willpower it is very, very important that you have to believe in the outcome of what you are doing the ritual for. You, of course, understand that you have helpers from the universe. Of course, when you are in my witchcraft class, you would know all the spirits around you and everything, you know, because obviously it's part of the whole knowledge. And of course, uh, that's the most important. You have to have a very strong belief system and the willpower to actually understand and um, believe in whatever you are doing. Obviously, you need to understand the rules and regulations of the universe. So you cannot perform anything that goes uh, against those rules and regulations. I am not going to get into that because it might not be very understandable just yet. So you have to do some studying if you want to actually understand what is going on. But uh, we never do that because, uh, you know, it is a punishable. <laughs> so, we, we never do that. But rituals are really important. And of course, you need to understand how um, nature works because nature is the greatest helper with the rituals. And the best is the moon, of course, and the sun. So the, the, the two poles of, of our little universe, the solar system. So... You really need to understand that and their power and to see uh, when is the best to do your ritual because it depends on the energies. Of course, you have to cleanse the place and put a, a, a really great um, energy around you and around the ritual whenever you want to do that. But it's fascinating. I have five covens all over the world. I am the boss witch, of course. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, they can uh, work by themselves now. 
and they do quite a lot of work and we work a lot for the universe for earth and yeah excellent work we do I was part of a group that did intentions and it sounds kind of like what your covens are doing in terms of doing rituals but when you were talking about having um willpower it it kind of reminded me of the intentions setting intentions and expecting them to happen but there's a lot of science behind how intentions work when you do stuff like that you you can i've personally experienced having something happen to me in the physical because people held an intention for it to be that way so i know that this is yeah. powerful powerful stuff um but it's it has a lot to do with people kind of doing the mind meld thing where your energies are all and it doesn't you don't have to be in close proximity for this to work you no. can be everywhere but the kind of if you have a group of people all holding the same intention and just like pushing that in that intention out it it can have profound effects on all kinds of things not you know the weather the the yes. ground the animals how people interact with each other it's yeah. really pretty in incredible yes it is um the only problem really is that um unfortunately let's say we we work uh for earth we do some work uh everybody has some idea what earth needs from us but you see that's not what we have to do because it is not us who actually decides what is the best for us because we cannot really see that clearly most of us so we really get the job from the universe yes okay the universe says let's say uh, that you have to uh, put some water here and there whatever i am just saying something now but some of you might think, oh, no, I mean, it is really silly. Why should I do that? And why do we want to do that? You know, so you really need to trust the universe and your intuition to understand what is it you need to perform there if you are working for the universe or for Earth. And you cannot doubt it even if it sounds really something ridiculous or you think that it is against earth because we sometimes cannot really see what is good or bad for us you know we just say good and bad but we only look at today or the now and not the future and what is very good at this particular moment might be very bad two days later so we always have to look at the future to see what comes out of it and what it brings into the universe so that's very important and for this you really need to understand how to trust how to work with your intuitions and how to actually believe in your work so it's pretty interesting it's pretty interesting we were talking a little bit before the before we started recording about um the matrix in terms of the the earth and the solar system are one sort of energy system inside of other energy systems and i was thinking about how and and you had mentioned that we are we are kind of one of the smaller energy systems and i was thinking that how perhaps we're just a dream of some other beings living out that experience 
that's that's one thought that came to me and the other thought is that as human beings we have beings within us you know the the organisms that exist inside of us each of our cells is actually a sentient to some extent being it it's a living a cell is a living entity and we are just a conglomeration of a bunch of cells living entities that make us up we look at like coral coral is is a group of living organisms yeah. but we're not so totally different we think we're just this one individual but we're not we're a collective <laughs> yes um it's very interesting how you put it and um i agree with with the concept actually because that's how we are um and um, yes the whole universe and i am talking about not earth and the solar system and the galaxy as such where we are but the total universe that is ever expanding because it is always expanding you know it might be yes the part of another very big ever expanding universe who knows of course but that's uh very far away from us and I think it's enough for us to understand the universe what we are uh, living in at the moment um, and of course but because everything is energy and that is what puts everything together and when I say energy that is energy in the terms of physics so it has everything has a speed, a color, a sound, a taste, a substance, you know, whatever. That's why we have all those senses. So we can use them to understand another human being or understand energies around us. And yes, that's, that is absolutely true. Um, human beings are a bit sort of different from every other beings on on this planet and from most beings really in the universe because in the universe there are about 16 or 17 earth-like planets um, because we are a, a blend of of a soul and the physical body that is the flesh so to so to speak it means that we are not a separate soul and my body like we usually refer to it we say oh my soul wants this and that and oh my but my brain wants this and that or my mind that's even worse because the, we have the mind because of the soul otherwise we would only have a brain <laughs> you know it is fascinating how it works and yes everything is a, a a living organism and the whole system the whole universe uh has the same dna structure but of course it spirals differently and whatever but uh, the the first and the foundation is everywhere the same in everything whatsoever that's what actually keeps us together and of course the body that's what keep keeps our, keep, keeps our body together otherwise yes we could just sort of fall apart <laughs> <laughs> with all those little organisms you know <laughs> And they just wander off. <laughs> yes. yes, yes, yes. I mean, it's very interesting. You can see the uh, the water drop, you know, water. Water starts sort of flowing uh, if it has a, a pressure. But when it is, when it doesn't have the pressure, it doesn't flow forms a little balloon you know and then when it is very heavy it drops but what holds the water together 
it, it is air, you know, because the air puts, puts uh, tension. Yes, it's amazing, you know, it is just absolutely amazing. And of course, all the physical uh, embodiment is it's just amazing what we are here in the universe. And of course, we are part of it. Our, our experiencing a little bit of technical difficulty here. We're going to hang on for just a second. Sir, sir. Hey, so what's the one thing you want to leave the audience with today, Zaza? Um, I would very much like everybody to understand how important it is to be conscious because we are co-creators of this universe. We have the power, we have the knowledge, we have, we are creators, guys, but we have to take the responsibility with us also. So please understand that you need to learn. You cannot become conscious by yourself, even though everybody is uh, promising you to, yes, to do that and this and whatever it is. but. Your only chance is learning because you have to understand what is happening. And then you will be all right. You will, be, you will have your path. You will have your, your understanding of life and others. And you will be totally happy. <laughs> so that's what I would like you to do. You can't help but um, be. <laughs> yes. So... And so how do people get in touch with you? Um, actually, my website, it bears my name, zazatudos.com. So whenever you wish, you can come. I am on Facebook, LinkedIn. I have a Facebook group. I, I am on Twitter also. So just visit me and ask me any questions. I would be very happy to guide you or help you or talk to you. No question is small. Don't worry about it. Just come and ask me anything you wish. Oops. <laughs> and we'll be sure to we'll be sure to put those links in the show notes. Thank you so much for joining me, Zaza. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me and Thank you so much for tuning in to another empowering episode of the You World Order Showcase podcast. We hope you've enjoyed hearing from our incredible life, health, and transformational coaches who are making a profound impact on the world. Remember, change begins with you, and you have the power to transform your life and the lives of others. If you want to take that next step and unlock your true potential, visit thecoachesalchemist.com where you can find the three ways we can help you for free to spin your talent into gold with clarity, a system, and a plan. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an inspiring episode. And if you enjoyed today's show, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback means the world to us and helps us reach more people with our positive message. Stay connected with us on social media for updates, behind-the-scenes content, and upcoming guest announcements. You can find us on Facebook at The You World Order or simply visit thecoachesalchemist.com. <laughs>